guys, there's a question I'm getting right now about as much as any other question in the stock market. And well, I mean, I am getting two other questions a lot. People, a lot of people asking me if there's NAT stock gonna beat on their earnings, okay? A lot of people ask me for my opinions on DraftKings stock, very random stock, but I'm getting ridiculous amounts of questions. By the way, if you want that video, like, let me know in the comment section. I could do a DraftKings video, okay? But the other massive question I'm getting right now from folks is should they be buying stocks? Should they be waiting? The market's been crazy. We're getting so much data from so many different places. And people are like, dude, should I, should I be buying this market or should I just be waiting on the sideline? Am I doing the right thing? And all those sorts of things. So I said, let's just do a really in-depth video about this. It's actually a really like, like simple question. But to understand like whether you should actually be buying this market right now or not, it's a little more in-depth than that. So let's just do a super in-depth video. Hope you guys really enjoy this as always. Let's get the two housekeeping things out before we even get into this video because once I get rolling on this, I just want to roll, okay? 1,975 thumbs up. That's what we have to beat in this video. I think we're going to crush that within like the first three hours of this video being out. I think we're gonna absolutely decimate that, okay? Second thing I'll let you guys know about Memorial Day sale coming on private stock group. You wanna get on the waiting list, link in the description, okay? Let's start getting rolling. So first off, I'm recording this very, very late on a Sunday night, okay? Very, very late on a Sunday night I'm recording this. Futures as of right now are up, okay? Up 200, 300 points. And who knows what's gonna happen in the market tomorrow, it's on Monday. Maybe the, maybe the Dow's up you know, another 200 points or maybe it's down 200 points. It honestly doesn't matter. And for this video, it shouldn't really matter if the stock market's up 200 points or down 200 points tomorrow. Because when you're making a decision about buying or not buying the stock market, it's usually gonna be based upon thousands of points, not a couple Couple hundred points, okay? And if we look, the, the stock market has been in this kind of zone over the past one month. If you pull up a one month chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that's what we are looking at here. And what you will find is, you know, it's been up for the past month, it's been down for the past month, but ultimately, it's about where it was a month ago. Like we've had a lot of volatility, a lot of, you know, bad days and good days but it's still about the same as it was literally one month ago. You go ahead and look at the S&P 500. It's about the same exact place it was a month ago, which is incredible. You've had a lot of peaks and valleys over the past month and a lot of drama and a lot of you know negative talk and like some positive talk like, oh, things are gonna bounce back. And yet the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, it's, it's about the same place it was literally just a month ago. The only indice that's really done really well is the NASDAQ 100, which obviously, you know, the big players in that are Amazon, Microsoft, Google, McDougal, and Apple. Those stocks have held up pretty well and actually, you know, kind of prospered and look at look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's the only, literally the only indice in the past one month that's actually shown a lot of strength, okay? So that's just something to kind of take into account there. But at the end of the day, you pull this out a little further, you go ahead and look at a six month chart, and the fact is the market is still down quite a bit. Although we have bounced back a lot from the lows, and we that needs to be said, we, we definitely have bounced back. We're still off considerably. We're off 6,000 plus points off the Dow all-time high, which was hit literally just back in February, right? S&P 500, it hit, you know, it tops out at almost 3,400. We're at 2,800, somewhere around there roughly right now. So that's a long way from the bottom that we hit when it was like 2,200, but you know, still, it's still quite a way from, from the peak, let's put it that way. The NASDAQ 100, it's getting a little closer, okay? The NASDAQ 100 now, you know, in the futures market, at least pushing up over 9,200, and keep in mind, the highs were right around 9,800 for the NASDAQ 100. So that one, you know, who knows? We could maybe potentially actually hit all-time highs for the NASDAQ within the next few weeks if this trend continues, which is absolutely crazy, okay? It just, that's just crazy in itself, okay? Conflicting data. We are getting so much conflicting data, and this is what makes this such a hard answer to just say, go buy stocks, don't buy stocks, wait on the sideline, sell your stocks, things like that, because we are getting the, the most conflicting data I've ever seen in my 12 years of being in the stock market and by far and away, okay? This is a perfect example. This is the, the, the leading headline literally on CNBC app right now. Like when you log in as of right now, late, late Sunday night, this is the first thing you're greeted with on top news. Powell says GDP could shrink more than 30%, but he doesn't see another depression, okay? That, that, that literally, those, those few words right there, that is conflicting data in itself right now. So GDP, oh my gosh, that's awful, down 30% plus, but hey, we're not gonna have another you know, depression. That's a, that's a perfect example of conflicting data we have right now. 
Apple earnings came out a few weeks ago, okay? Apple had, you know, pretty bad earnings. I mean, they're, they're good if you're any other public company, for, but for Apple, they weren't very good earnings. Let's be quite frank. But yet on the conference call, Apple CEO Tim Cook says the company saw an uptick across the board in late April thanks to stimulus checks and work from home. That's a that's a huge conflicting like earnings report, right? Uh, bad earnings, you know, a lot of negativity, especially in the month of March, like just sales weren't good for Apple. But in April, the company saw a huge uptick. So you, you look at that and it's just like, oh, that's just so, so conflicting. You can't just look at it and say, it's all bad for Apple or it's all good for Apple. You're getting, you're getting conflicting data right there, okay? You've got Warren Buffett, obviously, you know, uh, the Oracle of Omaha, he has a shareholder meeting, which nobody was at, even though there's usually like 15, 20,000 people, obviously because of Rony Rona, they couldn't, you know, have people in the stadium. So it's just him up there talking and answering questions for hours upon hours, right? And, you know, he's very bullish on the United States of America long term and has a lot of great things to say and says, you know, never bet against America. And, you know, this is going to pass and, you know, and just a lot of positivity. But yet he sat on $140 billion and didn't buy the dip. You know, this is this is what I'm talking about with conflicting data. So many positive things. He sold the airlines all those airline stocks at a loss. He lost money on everything. Everything airline related, he lost money. Warren Buffett, you know, I hate ever selling a stock for a loss. And I'm sure Warren Buffett hates it just as much, if not more than me, right? It's a hard thing to swallow when you say, dang, I was wrong about this. And Warren Buffett, you know, sells all these airline stocks at a loss. That's that's pretty dang interesting, right? But yet, he, yet he's bullish long term. Yet he's not. It's not like he's selling off all his stocks. He just sold off this one group over here, right? And so that, that you know, the, the main investor in the market, what, who everybody looks to in the stock market, Warren Buffett, he's showing so much conflicting data. He's not selling off a bunch of other stocks, but yet he sold off the airlines. And the airlines are kind of like, you know, you just think about the economy, right? The economy is really strong. Usually the airlines are doing really well, right? Economy is really weak. Guess what? Usually the airlines are doing really weak. You know, $140 billion roughly they're sitting on. The, the market dipped. And yeah, the market did dip very shortly. And then it started to bounce back, obviously, very quickly. But didn't buy anything? Like, you know, they didn't buy anything on a dip. Not even their own stock. You know, this is that that is massive conflicting data from the face of who everybody looks to in the stock market community. You know, that's just crazy, okay? You want to hear about some conflicting data in my own life, right? Toll Brothers. So, you know, I, I'm looking at all this whole situation, you know, the worries, economic worries, and I'm like, I could probably negotiate a really good deal on a, you know, a really nice home out here in, in Vegas, right? So I go to the sales office and I start negotiating on a deal a few weeks ago. And I gotta say, it was like pulling teeth. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm pretty dang good at negotiating. I know about every trick in the book when it comes to, you know, one-on-one -on -one negotiations and negotiating with a company to get what you want and being able to walk out of the room and not even contact them for weeks. And I gotta say, guys, I was like pulling teeth to try to get them to do anything as far as a discount on a lot or anything like that or upgrades. It was ridiculous. They were so steadfast. They li like literally, it was like, you know, here's what we're offering you. If you don't want it, take your money and go home. It was incredible. They are so not desperate over there. I was like, I, it was literally, it was shocking to me. That's the best way I could put it. It was shocking how little desperation that company had. That They were literally just like, no, you, you, this, is, this is the only thing will do for you and it's that or it's nothing and and this is a you know a very high value property needless to say i was negotiating on that's conflicting data when i look at something like that and i'm like oh okay, yeah here's a home builder on the high end and and they literally don't even care about my money like they they, they would rather have me walk than give me what i want it that's you know hmm okay more conflicting data okay i guess the housing market is not too bad or you know at least it looks at least on the higher end of the market because they they if things were bad believe me they would i would have all the negotiation leverage there and it's just it's not that way right now okay you look at the stock market right the stock market in itself is conflicting data the NASDAQ 100 has just went on a crazy run, and it's not just the NASDAQ, the SP 500, the Dow, we looked at all the charts. Meanwhile, what, what have we gotten over the past one to two months? Just awful news. I mean, it's just been disastrous. I mean, every bit of news, unemployment rates, GDP declines, obviously, Rony Rona, everything, awful, 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 bad, bad, bad. And yet, where the stock market trend for the most part? Yeah, it had some days that were down, and some things like that, but mostly, it's been up, up and away. We, we reached that bottom back, you know, in what was that mid to late March. 
And then it literally ever since then, it's just, you know, it hasn't been up every day, but it's been pretty dang close with an onslaught of awful news. And you always think about the stock market, right? The stock market's always kind of like, you know, looks to the future a bit, right? And so it's kind of going to price some things in sometimes that it sees going on in the future and things like that. And you got to look at it and you got to say, man, maybe the market knows something or maybe the market doesn't. But the, the fact is we've had nothing but awful news for the last one to two months. And yet the stock market's been pretty much going up for the last one to two months, okay? Tesla stock's a conflicting data point. I mean, Tesla stock, everybody said, Phew, wait till the stock market gets rough for that one. Wait till we have a recession. Hey, the recession's here. It's massive. It's Goliath, right? And look at how well Tesla stock's holding up. A Tesla stock today's 800 bucks. I mean, yeah, it's not an all-time high, but I mean, 800 is pretty dang high. This was a stock that last year you could pick up for what, $180 a share, $200 a share. You could pick this one up for in, in, in you know 2019. And this was this was the stock. This was like the the face of the stock market when it came to man. When the big recession comes, when the big stock market you know collapse comes, wait to see what happens with Tesla stock. And it's like it, it's actually held up pretty dang well. It's actually amazing how well that stock. That's a conflicting data point in itself. Look at the unemployment rate. It's climbing to you know right around fifteen percent now. It's probably gonna, it's probably going to go over fifteen percent and could approach twenty percent, right? But on the conflicting side, you can say, well, yeah, that's insanely high. But guess what? As the economy starts to open back up, the number is going to come down. We don't know how much it's going to come down, but the fact is, the unemployment rate it will come down. The question is. How much is it going to come down? How many jobs are going to come back as the economy starts to fully open? And let's say the economy is fully open at some point in 2021. Let's say it takes all the way till 2021 to fully get the economy back open. How many jobs come back? What does the unemployment rate go to? Does it does it come down under 10% or does it stay above 10%? Does it come down to 7%? Well, 7, you know, 7% is still pretty high, right? Does it go all the way down to 5, 4, 3% again like we've been for the past couple of years? These are, that's, you know, that's a lot of conflicting data. You look at my city, right? Las Vegas, a city built on tourism. People come in here, have a great time, right? Right now, the strip's completely closed and it's been completely closed for two months now, okay? That means 100% of those jobs are, are gone at the moment, okay? All those people are counting in on those unemployment figures as of right now, okay? All those dealers, all those servers, all those maids, all those janitors, everybody, okay? All, uh, unless they're super high up at the company where they, you know, they have that type of role that they have a job always, don't matter what, pretty much, right? Almost 100% of those jobs on that strip you see right there are gone right now, completely gone at the moment. But we know the strip's gonna start to open back up. It looks like possibly as early some properties as Memorial Day weekend. We'll see what happens with that. But regardless, it looks like the strip's gonna start to open back up in some form, at least in June, right? So you say, okay, it, it, the strip starts to open back up in June. What, how many of those jobs come back? Is it 50% of the jobs come back? You know, what, is that what it's gonna take? Is it gonna be more like 75% of those jobs come back? Is it gonna be 90%? We can assume it's probably not 100%, right? That might be a little unrealistic that 100% of the jobs come right back. But, but where is that number? And what about 2021? You know, if let's say 75% of the jobs come back this year, is it 90% next year or are we back to full employment? 100% of those jobs come back in 2021. This is something we just don't know because we haven't gone through this. We have never gone through a, a situation where you, the, the strip's never closed, okay? The strip has never closed in its history. I had to look it up. It just, this is not something that happens. You don't just like, like even after, you know, 9-11, they didn't close the strip, right? Business went down considerably, but they didn't say, oh, we're going to close the whole strip or something like that. This is just not something that happens. And you think about all the other things that happened throughout time, you know, over the last 20, 30, 40 years, the strip's never closed. The strip's been closed for two months, so you know we don't know how this thing is going to open back up. And this kind of leads me to just say, I give up, man. I just give up. You get, you have so much conflicting data. You're running through all these different scenarios. You're like, well, if this happens, this happens. But this is gonna, you know, be a domino fall in the wrong way. But this is gonna pick things back up. And it's like, oh my gosh, it just, it, you know, I I released something in the Discord chat the other day in the breadcrumbs tab, right? It was a it was an audio message basically where I'm just saying my brain is fried from this whole thing, just flat out. I mean, you put so much thought into this and just going through all these different scenarios and looking at all these different data points and trying to figure this crap out. 
And it is like, it is a mess to figure out. Like one minute I feel like, oh my gosh, this is, this is just bad, bad, bad. Next minute I'm like, well, you know, maybe, maybe things are, you know, it's a glass. It's like the, the, the famous expression, right? They say, is a glass half full or is a glass half empty? And right now I can give you, I can, I can go on either side of that. I can give you the, you know, glass is half full scenario. And I can say, well, you know, here, here's the good stuff. And I can go on the other side and I can, I can uh, give you a doomsday scenario on why nothing's ever going to be good again. I can go through both of those scenarios with you. And that's just, you know, that's the type of stuff that just, oh, it hurts my brain. And so if we go back to that top news on the CNBC app, right? Just that thing right there, right? Just literally those, those few words right there. I could say, well, I could go, you know, definitely the negative side. I say, well, that's horrible GDP. 30% plus decline. That's awful. And guess what? It's going to stay bad. And it's going to stay bad for a quite a while. And I can say it won't recover. And I could go that route. I could definitely go doomsday route. And I could also go the flip side and say, well, hey, he said there's not going to be no, another depression. That's great news, okay? And guess what? GDP is going to bounce back in 2021. Awesome, man. This is awesome. You know, I can I can literally go both sides of this, okay? You want to see some, some crazy numbers. You just get ready for this. And I think th this is what really gets down to the bottom of the core pit of just uh, the complete confusion out there and these conflicting data reports and all those sorts of things. Get ready, okay? We go to federalreserve.gov, okay? This is a website. This is gonna give you all the information you wanna know on what the Fed is doing, okay? Get ready to see something crazy. This time last year, the Fed's balance sheet had about 3.8 trillion, and it was actually shrinking for a while. The, the Fed's balance sheet was actually shrinking through a lot of 2019. It was good, it was good. The Fed's balance sheet was shrinking. Awesome, kind of like deleveraging there. It was a 3.8 trillion. That's the Fed's balance sheet, okay? Today it's seven trillion. Today it is seven trillion dollars of Fed's balance sheet. That is the most startling, crazy, like you could have never made this stuff up scenario in a 12 month span from 3.8 trillion to seven trillion dollars and climbing. And it's not gonna stop climbing anytime soon. That number is gonna go higher and higher and higher throughout likely the rest of 2020. If you expect that number to get back down to 3.8 trillion or any number even remotely close to that anytime soon, it's not happening. That number is gonna con continue to climb. And this is where things start getting so dang complicated because the Fed is throwing so many different things at us with so much money and stimulus and PPP plans and backing of businesses, big and small businesses, bailing out the airlines, bailing out this, bailing out that. Seven trillion dollars we're looking at now and it's gonna continue to climb. The White House is exploring $5,000 stimulus checks in exchange for delayed social security benefits. The House just passed a three trillion dollar stimulus package and that might not get all the way through, but I, there's a high probability we're gonna have another stimulus package within the next, let's say 15 to 30 days. High probability, okay? It might not be that exact $3 trillion plan, but I would say, you know, more than likely, I would say 99% probability within the next 15 to 30 days, we have another massive stimulus package coming. It's just a question of, well, you know, what are gonna be the details in there? But it's gonna be another big one, okay? We know the White House is likely to support a new round of stimulus checks, okay? Flat out, there's gonna be more stimulus checks coming. That's all, you know, when both sides want something, they're gonna get it done. The, the details around that, that still remains to be seen. But there will be more stimulus checks coming. The question is, how much money is it going to be? Is it going to be 600 bucks, 1200 bucks? Is it going to be up to $6,000 per household? Is it going to be less than that, more than that? Something's coming, okay? And when you see all this with the stimulus money, the bailouts, the, the loans, the forbearances on rents and mortgages for, for you know, some folks, you know, for several months in the future, if not years, and then now they're actually making a change where instead of you having to pay all that money up front, a lot of these mortgages, you're just gonna pay it down the road, essentially. It's just gonna be, you know, more months added on to the end of your mortgage, which is smart because, believe me, if you couldn't pay your, your mortgage or your rent one month, you're not gonna come up with three months magically at the end of the pie. Like, that's just unrealistic. So I figured they would somehow bail out that whole system, and that looks like they're gonna likely do that, okay? And this is, this is just so confusing, okay? So let's go through bad news, good news. Bad news, unemployment's crazy high. 
Number two, GDP is crazy low. I mean, it's going down so fast right now. Number three, zero percent interest rates. You know, the Fed's fund rates now at zero percent. Heck, there's even talk that they could take them to negative interest rates. We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, that just means more debt, right? More debt in the system. I mean, you know, uh, you can look at that as a positive or a negative. A lot of people are going to look at that as a negative, right? Number four, the economy is still kind of closed. I mean, some businesses are opening back up slowly but surely, but the economy for the most part is still closed. We have no vax out there right now, right? And more and more people are getting Rony Rona than pretty much ever before. Number six, many people are very uncertain about the economy in their jobs. Many people. I mean, it's a lot of people out there. It's not just people that care about, you know, the, the you know stocks and real estate and things like that. A lot of people in general are just like they don't know, you know, what their job situation is looking at. Like so number seven, corporate earnings are, are awful, right? You know, the, I haven't seen very many good earnings reports. I'm like, wow, that company really smashed and had a great. You know, it's just not going on right now uh, for ninety to ninety five percent of these companies out there. Corporate executives, CEOs of these companies, they're clueless. They can't they can't guide for anything right now. They can't guide for 2020. They can't guide for the next quarter. They're completely clueless. And it's not because they're not very intelligent people. They just have no clue how this Rony Rona situation is going to roll out, when their business is going to be able to fully scale and fully open back up. So these corporate CEOs are clueless. That's a lot of bad news. Good news is unemployment, it's going to come down in June more than likely. How much, as we spoke about, we don't know, but it's likely going to start you know, coming down at some point in June. Number two, GDP is going to likely bounce back if you're looking on a quarterly over quarterly basis. In 2020, as well as 2021, we're going to possibly be looking at some you know, year over year gains actually in GDP, okay? Number three, will you say low interest rates? Okay, you know, low interest rates, but guess what? That's usually good for asset prices. When interest rates are really low, that's usually a great thing for asset prices. Usually stocks guess what? Usually go up in an environment where interest rates are super, super low. Real estate, what does real estate usually do when interest rates are super, super low, which mortgage rates, by the way, are like the lowest pretty much they've ever been right now, literally. It's like insane, right? Usually that's a great thing for asset prices. Number four, the economy is starting to open back up. Yeah, it's not fully open, but guess what? It is starting to open back up. Number five, a VAX is coming. Who knows how much longer it takes, six months, 12 months, 18 months, but there's almost 100% probability a VAX is gonna come at some point in time. Number six, the, the, the picture is going to become clear as you know things start to get rolled out, the economy starts to open back up. The picture will eventually get clear. Uh, it's just another question of, is it take three months, six months, nine months, or 12 months to get that clear picture? Number seven, corporate earnings will likely improve in 2021. Number eight, executives are going to start getting a clue on their business very soon, possibly as early as 3Q, if not 4Q. And they'll be able to start giving some guidance around their business and kind of what they're looking at, okay? And so there you are, left at the end of the day, there you are, right there, okay? And you're like, okay, do I buy? Do I wait? I've heard all this data. We've gone through all these different scenarios. What's going on? It's a lot of conflicting data. At the end of the day, here's my advice. For th There's three groups of people that are watching this video right now, and you're fitting into one of these groups. I can guarantee that, okay? First group, you, let's say you have most of your money already invested in stocks. You're one of those individuals, and including myself, you have most of your wealth invested in stocks right now. If you're in that group, wait, in my opinion. I wouldn't buy stocks here. If you already had the majority of your wealth invested in stocks, I think this is a time to just say, Let's just, let's just wait, let's just see how things play out over the next few months, in the next few quarters. And if the NASDAQ goes back to all time highs, oh well, it goes back to all time highs and we miss some a little more gains on some of these stocks. If Apple stock is, let's say, $307 today, right? And let's say over the next six months, it goes to $320 and we missed out on some gains in Apple stock. Okay, great, we're already heavily invested in this market. Why, why do we, the ones that already have the majority of our wealth invested in the stock market, why do we have to stick all our money in right now? Like literally, literally just like, why do we have to stick all our money in? Because it could go back to all time highs or something like that. We already have the majority of our wealth invested in the stock market. Like right now, if you're in that scenario, it makes sense to just say, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna chill over here right now. Let, let me see how the economy opens back up. Let's see how much uh, vigor the consumers have to go out there and spend money. Let, let's see, you know, how these stimulus checks get rolled out. And let's just let's just wait and see. Let's just have a little patience for a moment. Let's not stick all hundred, let's not go 100 percent invested. Let's not even go 90 percent invest in this market. Let's just wait and see. We got the majority invested, and if it goes up a bunch, great. We're gonna make a ton of money. But why do we need to have every penny in this market right now? Okay, that's the first group. Okay, the second group of folks out there that are watching this video right now. 
you're, if you're somebody that has very little to none of your money invested in this market, okay, you have very little of your money or none of your money invested, but you want to get invested, okay, if, and this is a big if, if you know what you're doing, you know what to look for in stocks, you know how to value a company, and you're pretty confident in your abilities, okay, you can buy some stocks right now, okay. Keyword is some stocks you like right now, not let's put 100% of our money into the stock market right now and get every dime invested, okay? If you want to do that when the market was at, you know, Dow was at 18K, you know, good for you. And you got in right at the bottom and you went all in. But now, you know, Dow approaching 24K, NASDAQ 9200, and still definitely some things we got to work through. I think it's hard to be, you know, say, uh, just because I have a, you know, let's say you have uh, $10,000 on the sideline right now, you got $1,000 invested in stocks and you wanna, you wanna invest your money. It's very hard for me to say, go invest all that 9K right now. It's very hard for me to say that. But on the flip side, if you know what you're doing and you see an opportunity in the market, which there are a few opportunities in this market, okay? Just because the market's bounced back a lot does not mean all these stocks have bounced back. Believe me, there's still some opportunities in this market for some great companies that are probably gonna double up or triple up their stock values over the next you know three to five years. If you identify one of those, it's worth investing in, okay? That's if you know what you're doing, okay? The last group of people that are watching this video right now, if you're clueless on what you're doing, if you're clueless on what the heck to look for in a stock, valuations, things like that, and you don't know, you, you know, you're brand new to this game, you don't know anything, don't buy, be a bench warmer right now, okay? Sit your butt on the bench. It's not your time, okay? If you don't know what the heck you're doing out there, sit on the bench, have a seat, and you know, focus on learning about like what to look for in stocks. This is not the type of market and not the type of economic time you wanna get involved if you're completely clueless, okay? Learn, focus on you know, learning the game before you ever think about investing. So many times people wanna invest their money out, you know, they create a Robinhood you know, account or, or a Fidelity account or whatever, and they just wanna invest all their money. It's like, man, if you don't even know what to look for in the stocks, like you're playing at a scary time. You're playing at a very scary time to be investing all your you know your your money out there when you don't even know what the heck you're doing have a seat on the bench and chill okay that's my advice there uh, for those three groups of people after going through all that gauntlet of data we just went through so I hope you guys really enjoy this always just let you know the Memorial Day sale is coming up that's gonna be huge the link down there is gonna be in the description if you want to get on the waiting list for that make sure you take advantage of that especially if you don't know what to look for in stocks and whatnot I cover it all like literally we go through everything in there there's like a video for everything to know exactly what to look for in stocks how to build your accounts up how to you know end up prospering in the stock market so uh, Definitely take advantage of that if you have not. Link down there in the description. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.